All right, well, welcome to the Bears Gym today. We're going to be hitting Bear Paul's Bible study in the book of Psalms, chapter 87. Just a nice, quick smooch in the Old Testament. Then we're going to head on over to the New Testament to our Bible study in Galatians. And with that short chewing of the flap, Psalms 87. God's foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. There is spiritual duplicity in the scriptures that's intentional. This is one of them. Because we have a physical Zion right now in Israel, and we have a physical Zion in heaven. The Zion in heaven it has a spiritual connotation, eternal, immortal, The Zion on earth has its place with Israel, with the promise of God's chosen people. Another thing, holy mountains. There's a, a spiritual mystery of God's holy mountain that is also a spiritual mystery in the heavenly realm. We also have mountains on earth where Moses met with God. He met with the Son of God. God gave him the Ten Commandments. God gave him laws for the children of Israel to obey. So there are duplicities in the scripture that are intentional. There are some things we understand on the physical, emotional, spiritual, ecumenical stratas of this life. Once we get to the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm, the eternal, that's where things are a mystery. And we understand them a little because now we see dimly as through glass or in a dim mirror but then we shall know fully known after the rapture of the church after the resurrection of the righteous as we're in heaven enjoying our new rooms that God has prepared for us when God ushers in the new Jerusalem and so forth and so on so there is duplicity in the scriptures. Look for it. Think about it. Spiritually meditate upon it. We move on. Verse 3. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, Silah. Silah is a rest. It's a... Um, it's a... Boke erinerum. A memory. Book of memories think about, meditate upon. I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia, Cush, this one was born there. Interesting. In the midst of all the hyper- terrorism activities around the world in the midst of all that noise God's moving in revivals there's a revival in Iraq there's a revival in Iran a spiritual revival unto Jesus Christ spiritual revivals in India unprecedented that have never before been seen because it's a calling card. The troubles 
the chaos, the wars in the earth. God's calling card. He's saying, one of these days I'm going to appear in the heavens. You need to be ready. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning in your faith for the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And may the Heavenly Father be glorified in your life by the power of His Holy Spirit. And of Zion it shall be said, This and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he writeth about the people that this man was born there. And once again, Scylla, a rest. Now about the singers, the music. And the singers and the players of instruments shall be there. In all my springs of joy, I in you, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit, not their words, not even their works, but by their fruit. The joy of the Holy Spirit. is our strength. When I see a preacher or a so-called Christian, or whether they are or they're not, it's not the point. Somewhere in there is the joy of the Lord through hardship, through trials, through good times, through bad times. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's the joy of the Lord. That doesn't mean we're happy all the time because sometimes we're not happy. Your grandmother died. You loved her terribly. And you're crying, but you have peace. That joy is peace. Because you knew your grandmother loved the Lord. And now she ain't sad anymore. Your son died. He ain't sad anymore. He's in the presence of the Lord. He has the joy of the Lord. There's a peace. Not that you're smiling and laughing. You might even be crying, but there's peace because you know he or she is in heaven in the presence of Jesus Christ forevermore. And that, my friend, is joy. Okay, Psalm 87, our little smooch in the Psalms, of God's beautiful and wonderful word. We're moving over to Galatians now, chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 in the New Testament as we go through these little books there's a lot of heavy substance there's a lot of mitak essen a lot of a lot of lunch a lot of a lot of food to bulk you up for the day, for the next half of the day. You're going to find that in these little mini epistles. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Timothys, Titus. Hebrews, Peter, Jude. The epistles of John. Wonderful, wonderful books. Galatians chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What's the difference between a biblical rebuke that you're continuing in sin, or we have a sin nature and we fall sometimes? That's what you practice on a regular basis. If you've fallen, it's time to get up. If you're practicing some gross sin, you're in dangerous ground. You need to get up and out of that sin. Let Jesus wash you clean. Wash your feet. 
and put you back on the narrow road, the narrow walk of eternity. Sometimes a brother or sister need a little help, a little direction. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Help them. Help him, her. Whatever it might be. If they're, if they're willing, they want the help, they need the help, they're asking for help, what should I do? If they don't want your help, then there's not much you can do with them. Because you can lead a horse to the water, but the horse has got to dip down and drink water. So you can share them the water of life, the word of God, precept in the scriptures that applies to their life or their problem. And if they receive it, then they have drunk and let the joy of the Lord be their strength. Because that's where our joy is found, in Jesus Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, in faith in our Heavenly Father. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. None of us are anything. We're nothing. We need Jesus. We need his forgiveness to be washed and regenerated by the Holy Spirit. To have him help us put our faith in him. And our Father. That God's going to show us through this current difficulty we're in little by little step by step hour by hour minute by minute let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for every man shall bear his own burden everyone has to walk the line everybody has to walk the narrow road unto eternity you gotta walk got to get up you got to leave the whiskey behind you got to leave those bad relationships behind fornication immorality sensualities drunkenness lies cheating deceit we just read about that in galatians chapter 5 you want a list you just back up to our study in chapter 5 galatians tells you the whole list if you're practicing those things on the list you're in danger can you lose your salvation you betcha you, you can We'll talk about that another time, but it makes it very clear. If you practice these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you fall, then you need to get up and say, I'm sorry, Father, I've sinned. Be washed clean and stop the sin. But you can turn to that list in Galatians. Galatians 5, right about verse 19 through about 22. We'll give you the, the list of tests. Paul said, prove yourself. Well, go to the list over here. Make sure that some of these things are not in your life and make sure that the study the word of God and your love for Jesus Christ is very, very prevalent in your life. Not coming out of your mouth, not making a big show, but that you love Jesus Christ. That you're ready in season and out of season. Your love for him is supreme here on this earth. Above all else. So there's time to help your brother and sister. There's a time where you got to walk the line. Because you've chosen Jesus Christ. And you must confess him before men. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. See, it's a, it's a two-way street. you got to walk the line. He'll help you. And other brothers and sisters will help you. But you have to walk the line. Of faith. Repentance. Hope. Love, belief in Jesus Christ. Let him that is taught the word communicate unto him that teacheth. 
Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary of well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As you do good, 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 good to those around you, even to those that knife you in the back, realize the rewards are not here. This is not where we reap the rewards. Our rewards are in heaven with Jesus Christ forevermore. That's all the reward we need. It's to enter his kingdom, to be caught up in the rapture, to join with all the saints of eons gone by, whereas they were in the presence of the Lord and they're joined with their new eternal bodies and we go off to the marriage supper of the Lamb and we're enjoying Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's the reward. Verse 11, see how a large letter I've written to you with mine own hand. He wrote real big. I wrote, I read in really big print. I order special Bibles that have the biggest print in the whole wide world. Matter of fact, this one is an 18 point font. So I can read it without old lady glasses on. I hate that. You know, you got to put on old lady glasses to read and do wiring jobs at work. But you got to do what you got to do. When you get old, your, your eyes start squinting up. You need stronger and stronger glasses. But for now, I can get big enough print in the Bible to read without glasses. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. People are always trying to go, oh, come to my church. Oh, you need to get baptized. Oh, you need to get circumcised. Oh, you need to do this. Oh, you need to do that. My test of everybody's little Donkey Kong rules, as I call them, you got to do this, you got to do that. I was compared with things in the Old Testament. So if they're important, they cross over. Sodom and Gomorrah movement, New Testament, is forbidden in the churches. It's, it's a, an abomination to God. Men marrying men, women marrying women, that's an abomination to God. It's very clear in the book of Romans, and you go back, that was a death penalty crime in the Old Testament. Understand that. Drunkenness. You can't keep getting drunk and saying, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm, I love Jesus. And you're drunk every weekend. That's an oxymoron. Okay, So compare it, Old Testament, New Testament. The thief on the cross, talking about circumcision, baptism. He didn't have anything. He cried out in mercy, knowing he was going to die. He said, Jesus. Basically, I'm going to sum up the words because the translations, we don't have everything he said. He obviously cried out to Jesus Christ for mercy and begged forgiveness of sins. I said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Jesus said, I see that hand. You're going to be with me in paradise. Okay? Now, God has given us lots of gifts, lots of things to do on earth just for the joy. It's good practice, good experience. Thief on the cross. He didn't have nothing. Except he cried out to God for mercy. Jesus said, I see that hand. And you're going to see me in heaven forevermore. I love that. Verse 14. We'll move here. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's the gospel right there. What Jesus did on the cross, our repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Give up the sin to follow Jesus Christ. Let him wash you clean. Everything he did on the cross and just cling to him. Get the joy of the Holy Spirit. You get washed and regenerated in the Holy Spirit. His little seed is planted in our hearts. We become a child of Jesus Christ daughter of Jesus Christ. Glory in what he did. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision 
faileth anything nor uncircumcision. You can insert anything. Circumcision, baptism, foot washings, women wearing long hair, men wearing short hair. You can find all them little rules that people have for you to do. It's nothing. This is the work of God that you believe in Jesus Christ and keep his commandments. His commandments are repentance and faith. Verse 16. As many as walk according to this rule, peace be to them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Once again, there's a duplicity. There's an Israel, a real Israel, and there's a spiritual Israel where that is, they're born again. I know Jews that are born again they're part of the spiritual Israel. I know Jews that are of the flesh. They're just Israel. They're God's chosen people, but they've rejected the Messiah. And their punishment for rejecting the Son of God, it will be the same for non-believers who have rejected the Son of God. If they're still alive, they'll be cast, they'll go through the great tribulation upon the earth as all the Christians are in heaven enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb in paradise and the new Jerusalem and their new rooms because they rejected Jesus they'll be down here on earth during the tribulation period from henceforth let no man trouble me for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Paul was beaten whip terribly interesting things Things go around full circle. When Paul was a non-believer, he participated in the stoning of Stephen. When he became a Christian and he was involved in the ministry, he was stoned to the death and God brought him back. Amazing. Amazing. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all in the spirit. Amen. Now, we're just going to crack, just smooch uh, Ephesians just a little bit. Just, just a... Smooch through Ephesians, slurp up a little, you know, fountain of joy. Fontaine a, a jolly, the fountain of joy, the word of God, the Holy Spirit. So we're going to crack in Ephesians just a little bit here, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. Not to just the people in Turkey, which is modern day Ephesus. It's over there in Turkey. Be a cool place to visit. That's one of the places I like to visit. Coast of Turkey, island of Patmos. A lot of Asia Minor. I've heard it's beautiful. Black Sea. To Ephesus. And all those that are in Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ.